Hi everyone, this is Bobby from bn-games.com and welcome to part two of my childhood PC restore. Um, in part one, we discussed a little bit about this computer and um, unboxed this particular monitor and tested it for the first time and we were successful. Uh, in this video, <clears throat> we're going to open up the machine, take a little uh, look inside and see um, what it looks like in there. Um, and then in part three, we'll start plugging hard drives in and see if um, first my original childhood hard drive, you know, on my original Packard Bell worked, and see what's on this one if there's anything. This is the one I got off of eBay um, that's just covered in cables. So I uh, got my trusty iFixit kit right here. Um, seriously, if you if you work with hardware. Uh, of any kind, get yourself a knife fix a kit. You know, this is not sponsored at all because no one sponsors me. <laughs> Just get one because, I mean, they're great uh, for this sort of work. So, uh, we're going to get the monitor off here, open up the shroud, and take a look inside. So, first thing I'm going to do is make sure to unplug everything, um, get unplug the keyboard. I'm still waiting for a mouse to come in. Turns out I don't have a PS2 mouse that's reliable. Make sure to unplug the power because, well, that. Don't want to die. And uh, in the first video, I had mentioned that the VGA cord had been damaged. I'm going to show you that here now. See if you get up on camera. Uh, see if we can get it to focus. But basically, it's like someone chopped off the sides of the connector where the plugs, where the screw terminals are. So on the right here is what a normal VGA cable would look like, and you can see it has these screws to keep the connector firmly plugged into the computer and this one is you know um, wired to the monitor itself it's not one I can remove as far as I can tell and um, you know they should sort of look similar even though this is orange there should be these so I, I don't know how the hell they did this I really don't it's not a big deal because it works and you know I'm not moving the computer around a lot so not a big deal but I think I would show it I know I had like I said mentioned it um, in fact I'm not sure why just looking at this cable it might be hard to read probably can't pick it up and focus but it says space shuttle for some reason I, I, I don't know why anyway on to Opening this thing up, in fact, now that I'm looking at it, it looks like most of the screw. It doesn't look like any screws are in there. Well, maybe. All right, let's see. Okay, so preliminary look. It looks like the three screw holes that hold this uh, mont well PCK shroud are missing. Missing screws. So uh, we'll see if I can just pull this off. I really have trouble with these handy cam things. I hope it's all in focus, but uh, anyway, uh, I had to take a flathead screwdriver and kind of pry it. It was on there pretty good, so we're gonna take the shroud off. I'm gonna try to do it one-handed here. Oh, that's, that's still on there good. It is not coming off. <clears throat> all right. <laughs> Next shot will be of it off. All right, that wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be um, taking it off in the last shot. So let's see what we got here. So we got our power supply. I'm not sure how many watts it is. It doesn't say explicitly or I'm not seeing it. Um, we'll check on the model number to see what it says. It's a light on, which um, kind of surprised by that actually. Probably not the original power supply. Uh, we have the optical drive, which is using an IDE cable. It does have jumper set. Back in these days, jumpers were really important. Uh, floppy drive, hard drive, all the ribbon cables. It's a lot harder to do this one-handed than I thought it was going to be. There's the memory sticks. Oh. Okay, so <clears throat> I know it's hard to see, kind of, but well, probably easier to hear. Um, it has four banks, and they're all populated, which is surprising because when I started the computer the first time, you know, it said that um, that there was less RAM. 
So, unless they swap the stick out at some point, which is entirely possible, uh, I'm not sure what to make of that. I don't want to take all this stuff out, although I will eventually, because when we replace the hard drive, I'm going to have to get in there. And this, well, let's, let me, let me turn this thing around so it's a little easier. Okay, looking at it now, there's one screw up here, and it seems to be attached kind of like a tray. So removing this may not be as difficult as I thought initially it might be. And there's definitely a screw in here, connect, well, keeping it in place. Um, that's all weird. I'm not sure what that is. Almost like a tab for the... Hmm. Interesting. Okay. We'll have to see. Um, I see, like, they look like screws on the bottom. Uh, let's see if I can get it to focus. Maybe. We'll see. Um, got a fan here. I'm assuming it's an intake, although... That's some bad airflow considering it's right near the power button and there's no um, no gap there. That's interesting. I'm assuming that's the CPU based on the fact that it has a heat sink. Um, might re well might do thermal paste on that potentially. I doubt it's a problem considering. I mean, uh, this video is a week later than the first one I did. And uh, I had the computer running straight for a week, you know, not really doing much, but I think that if there have been problems, um, I'd have run into them by now. So we got some jumpers here. One says color. That might have been for the onboard video. I'm assuming because there's a VGA plug there. So maybe there's some sockets here that for well, some kind of ROM of some sort. I'm not sure. You don't see that kind of thing today in newer computers. Not really. Uh, this right here is the sound card. It's kind of sagging a little bit. Uh, I know it's a little. I know it's backwards here, but it does say Aztec. Let's see if we can get that to focus. Come on, focus. Focus. And uh, from what I understand from what I read about this particular model, it's a Sound Blaster 16 clone, or very similar. Um, it's something that HP was selling with computers um, instead of selling, you know, like proper Sound Blasters. Um, I found a web page full of drivers for this thing. Wow, it's got some bad sag right there, but I guess, you know, computer is well, 1993, you know, Jesus. 20 something odd years old or something. Um, I'm not even sure if it works. I haven't even tried it in uh, with the Windows 95 installation that's in here. But um, I know this is a sound card. I need to get uh, some canned air and blow this out. This up here is the video card. This is actually I don't know if I don't know if I'd use the word discrete video card. I also find it strange that it's upside down. Hmm, that one's easy enough to take off. Let's take that off and see what it looks like. Okay, that is the video card, <clears throat> and I think I know why it's upside down. Um, I was not expecting this. Uh, this actually has normal PCI slots, which I thought for a computer of this age, you know, again, I don't, don't open up computers this old very often, but I was under the assumption that PCI was a newer standard than this, you know, that's two of them. Most of the slots are these. I believe they're called ATA. It has been forever. Um, which is what the sound card is on. But um, I'm surprised that the video card is set to this. Now, I did a little research on this. This is. Um okay, I'm reading on my notes here. It is a S3 Trio 64V Plus. Um, which I guess was uh, semi-respectable in 1993. Um, I, well, this one says 1995. Well, I mean, 
around that time frame. I mean, it's no voodoo card. And I probably wouldn't put a voodoo card in here because, uh, you know, probably would put that in something nicer, faster. Since this machine is really just kind of a re recreation of my childhood computer, and I might do some DOS stuff with it, um, I primarily just want it to be there as an experience, that, you know, I, I, it's a retro thing, you know, I'm, I'm not going to be doing a lot of gaming on it. I'm probably going to stick with this as long as it works with Windows 3.1. Um, I'm pretty sure it probably will. If not, you know, uh, video cards of this era, super cheap to get. My only problem is finding the drivers that work for them. Uh, same with the sound card, although since this is a sound card based on my research, should have probably came with this particular computer. Um, I'm probably, probably not going to replace that unless I actually have an issue. But, um, yeah, so video card, sound card, the PCI, wasn't expecting that. It's not PCI Express. PCI Express is a completely different thing. This is old school PCI. Yeah, most of the computers I worked with and messed around with um, after this particular machine um, had PCI as their, as their standard port and then AGP was the video card port you know for the most part um, oh one other interesting thing this is the processor I mean I knew it before but it might be really hard to see here but there's a labor here label here it says Pentium TM processor so it's definitely the processor um, I don't want to take that out right now because I actually don't have any thermal paste to put on there. I'm not even sure these use thermal paste. Oh man, a lot of this old stuff, uh, really, really old stuff. Not sure. I, I would know. I mean, if I picked up, you know, if I took this heat sink off and I saw the paste on the bottom, I'd know it needs thermal paste. But considering this is only 60 megahertz, uh, very, very unlikely as far as I as far as I can tell. We'll find out. But by part three, I'll know. Uh, some of this is a bit of a relearning experience. I mean, I knew I messed with a lot of this type of hardware years ago, but I mean, it's been uh, over a decade since I've actually opened up something this old, really, and try to mess with it. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, so that's the guts of it. I mean, not much more to say about it until we, uh, you know, change the hard drive out. So, again, in part three, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in, and we'll probably take, keep the shroud off and just uh, unplug the connectors and plug in the hard drive that way. I'm not going to go through the whole process of trying to, you know, mount the drive. Um, but we'll plug in the one I got from eBay, see if I get anything off of it. I mean, I'm not expecting much, but we'll see, you know. Um, Knowing my luck, it probably has something like Windows 98 on it, if it has anything at all. And then uh, the other one, the big one we're going to do is uh, take my childhood one um, that did have Windows 3.1 and did come from a machine just like this one. Or rather, uh, should I say it was a replacement drive because the original drive, the original hard drive that uh, my Packard Bell came with was, I believe it was 650 megabytes. And the drive we had is like 1.2 gigabytes, something like that. I remember my father very specifically saying, oh, we'll never fill that. It's, you know, tons of space. <laughs> and here I have like an 8 terabyte drive for my YouTube video stuff, and that's still not enough, you know, all these years later. But uh, we'll plug it in and maybe we'll get something. I mean, it's not going to have the drivers for this stuff. And plug and play, uh, that wasn't really a word in 1993. Um, you know, that came more towards 1995 and really 1998 you know, with the introduction of USB, when USB was a real big thing, um, was the thing, you know, or, or Apple, you know, in the 90s, uh, late 90s with their stuff, plug and play. But in 1993, when this thing was manufactured, um, yeah, plug and play wasn't really a thing. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, you know, if I can get it just to boot up, you know, even if it doesn't have sound, for example, we could probably fix that. Um, I don't know. My plan is to, I'm hoping that the childhood drive works. You know, if I plug it in, it boots, and then we get Windows 3.1, then I don't have to try to reinstall Windows 3.1 fresh. I kind of wanted to just use the existing one and then build on top of that because it has my old files. You know, it has, you know, it's just, I'm hoping to use the original partition. Um, if that doesn't work, then the hard drive I bought off of eBay, which we're going to test first, like I said, we'll wipe that and then, you know, attempt to do the install. I still have to get a copy of Windows 3.1 
Anyway, I have to get the um, the floppy disk version, not the five inch floppy, because this doesn't have a five inch floppy. And I see a lot of those, uh, so we're gonna have to get that, you know, get that going or uh, make some disks, uh, which is entirely possible. Also, first thing I'm gonna do actually before I close this thing up, at least for this video, is I'm gonna take an air can and try to blow it out some. So uh, part three, hard drives. We're gonna see if uh, things boot. You know, go from that point and uh, see where we go from there. And hopefully by then I'll have a mouse to um, navigate. Um, my The plan for part four is to plug in my VGA to my capture device and at least record what's on the Windows 95 partition. And then if Windows 3.1 works, we'll do that with that as well. So these are all kind of things. And part of the reason I'm doing this in so many parts is because I'm recording this during my lunch hour, you know, in my lab. So I don't have a lot of time. And when we get to the point where I'm recording the actual OS stuff, I'm probably going to do this at home in the arcade, um, you know, instead of here in the lab at the office so anyway I know I'm rambling a little bit but those are the plans this is what it looks like inside of this old Packard Bell um, please comment rate all that stuff you know if you want to it uh, helps me want to keep doing these sorts of videos and uh, if you have any comments or if you have any suggestions rather uh, I'll take those as well um, if you have a copy of Windows 31 a complete box copy you want to sell me I'd be interested as well because I'd like to use the original discs if possible so, yep, we'll uh, get this back into the PCI port, air it out, and uh, button it up for now. But that's the end of this video. Like I said, uh, put all this stuff below. <laughs> I know I'm rambling. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you. It still powers on. Kind of miss when computers still made noise when they were quote-unquote thinking.